This video is designed to explain how spinal cord stimulation works to alleviate pain. We'll start with some basic neuroanatomy and spinal pain processing. Here is the brain, the cross section of the brain, the brainstem, and the spinal cord. Sensory fibers, also termed afferent fibers, are those which carry information from the periphery to the central nervous system. They bring in information related to touch, pain, temperature, etc. These fibers have their cell bodies in the sensory ganglion and project axons into the periphery and the spinal cord. The principal sensory fibers we are interested in for this topic are fibers that carry information concerning pain, called nociceptors, and non-nociceptive mechanoreceptor fibers, which carry information relating to touch. Nociceptors terminate in the gray matter of the spinal cord, in the spinal dorsal horn, with synapses to second-order neurons called projection cells. These projection cells cross the spinal cord and ascend in the anterolateral tracts. These are also called spinothalamic tracts. They take information to the thalamus. In the thalamus, they in turn synapse with and activate third-order neurons that finally convey signals to the somatosensory cortex, and actually quite a lot of different brain areas. The myriad signal paths and connections related to pain processing in the brain is termed the pain matrix. These areas include the insula, the anterior cingulate cortex, the prefrontal cortex, and the limbic system regions such as the basal ganglia and the amygdala. The pain matrix is a highly complex system that is only partly understood. We will not go into the detail of this central processing system, but it is within this matrix that we experience the affective components of pain. The somatosensory cortex informs of the localization of the pain. Mechanoreceptors also form synapses in the dorsal horn, but do not immediately terminate here. Instead, mechanoreceptor fibers enter the most posterior structures of the spinal cord, which are the white matter of the cuneate and gracile funiculi. These are collectively referred to as the dorsal columns and ascend towards the brain. The cuneate funiculus is only present in the cervical spinal cord. Funiculi is the plural of funiculus and means tract or column. Some, but not all of these, ascend all the way to the medulla, where they terminate in the gracile or cuneate nuclei and synapse onto second-order neurons that cross and travel onto the thalamus, triggering a third-order neuron that finally will reach the somatosensory cortex, where we perceive the sensation. These fibers also send multiple projections from their main axon back down to the dorsal horn for several spinal segments from their point of entry as they travel. They get thinner as they ascend and move medially along their path. These mechanoreceptor fibers play an important role in the processing of pain in the spinal dorsal horn. The synaptic endings of these fibers connect to inhibitory interneurons, which they can activate. The activation of these inhibitory interneurons is known to suppress the activity of second-order nociceptive projection neurons, such that they are less likely to fire in response to an incoming signal from the first-order nociceptor if inhibitory interneurons are also active. The importance of this interaction is highlighted in conditions such as post-herpatic neuralgia and painful diabetic neuropathy. In these conditions, mechanoreceptor, the sensory fibers, are also lost, which can result in a disinhibition in the dorsal horn and neuropathic pain. Inhibition of pain transmission in the dorsal horn is also affected by descending fibers from the brainstem. The spinal cord sits in an interstitial space filled with cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, and beneath the arachnoid matter and dura matter. Spinal cord stimulation leads are implanted in the epidural space, posterior to the spinal cord. Current is passed through the lead at one or more of the contacts to create an electric field. This field, as it increases in strength, will penetrate the dura mater and arachnoid mater and cerebrospinal fluid, and if strong enough, will activate the sensory cells whose axons run within the dorsal columns the mechanoreceptors. Originally, spinal cord stimulation was called dorsal column stimulation, 
as these are the target structures for the therapy. Spinal cord stimulation activates mechanoreceptors, thereby eliciting action potentials within multiple dorsal column axons. These are referred to as evoked compound action potentials, or ECAPs. We will discuss these further in a future video. The ECAP travels through axons in both directions, and down collaterals in the dorsal horn. Activation of mechanoreceptors in the dorsal columns via spinal cord stimulation leads to activation of inhibitory interneurons in the spinal dorsal horn, who in turn suppress the activity of nociceptive projection cells to reduce the number of pain signals ascending to the brain. The ascending signals that reach the medulla and somatosensory cortex can cause sensation that may also affect descending pain inhibition as evidenced by increases in the release of serotonin and norepinephrine in the spinal dorsal horn. There is also evidence of increased release of acetylcholine and depression of astrocytes and microglial activity. These other mechanisms are not completely understood, but may, by additive to the segmental inhibitory mechanism of action we have just described. Obviously, a certain volume of mechanoreceptors need to be activated for the therapy to be effective, and this is different between patients and etiologies. Therefore, spinal cord stimulation systems are individually programmed for each patient in order to activate the correct volume of fibers in the dermatome of the painful area for the best chance of success. There are numerous reviews in the literature on the mechanisms of action of spinal cord stimulation that add detail to what we've just reviewed. The textbook of neuromodulation is a very good starting point if you're interested to learn more. So there you go, that's the basics on how spinal cord stimulation alleviates pain.